segregate waste at source. We have to transport waste in segregated form. We have to decentralize waste handling to the areas where waste is produced. We have to set up processing capacity which can process the waste into useful products from plastic to oil or uh, from tetra pack to some furniture or whatever. So we need to do that. But the starting point for all this is we have to rework the BBMP contracts with the contractor. We have to be clear who does the waste belong to, what is the role of the contractor, what is the role of the BBMP, that is the start point. It is not an easy battle because he used a very big word that they are the mafia. Now anybody will tell you that you don't mess with the mafia. So you have to be also smart on how you do this to be able to unlock this thing. That's really the big message. On the, so there are some of us who believe that this is the roadmap and Kalpana, me and some others are working to make this happen. But that's really the essence of what we are trying to do in garbage. Any questions on garbage? Yes, Actually, ma'am. Actually, uh, you said that about the collection point. Yeah. But the people who are collecting, but uh, there are opportunities for them to affect by many number of businesses. You know, any medical package is more than Yeah. No, so as far as medical is concerned, technically speaking, medical waste, even in the house, needs to be dealt with separately. Because medical is toxic. Because people have got infection, people have got things. So medical waste has to be dealt with as a separate stream. So... No, I'm asking about the generally uh, people who are working on collection of the waste, yeah. you know. I have seen, they used to keep it in the raw hand only sometimes, sometimes occasionally they used to get the gloves. The gloves, one out of hundred. Ninety-nine people are not wearing gloves. Yeah, that's right. Any protection for them, a kind of medical package from the corporation uh, side? See, the question really is two, threefold. As you professionalize the sector, you will get into more hygienic practices of wearing gloves, dealing with this item, etc. Today the system invariably happens, BBMP might budget saying we must do this and the money gets spent but people are not sitting with the gloves. That's the tragedy of our place. It leaks off somewhere else. Yeah, BBMP employees not all of them. So if you take their 20,000 Porna Karmikas, 15,000 Porna Karmikas are Porna Karmikas with the contractor. 5,000 are with the BBMP. So they are not all BBMP employees. So you got to get the contractor to do that. Yeah. Um, I'll come to you. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of waste that comes out of the landlord is organic waste. Is, are you working with anything in terms of composting? Yeah. So actually, I didn't get into the uh, this thing. So the question really is, see, this chart I just spoke about dry waste. The question is, what do you do with the wet waste? You ask your question, then I'll answer both. Actually, I have a question as well as an answer. Yeah. I'm a green entrepreneur. Right. I have a solution for organic waste. Right. We make the most compact machines in the world. And uh, earlier I used to go and uh, you know, sort of discuss with BBMP. I wasted a lot of time. Then I got to know I may not get my money back, you know, even if I invest. There are people who have told me to invest in city market and other markets where I can put my machinery there. But then I started selling to corporates, tech parks, apartments. Now, nowadays I'm happy getting richer by the way. So the thing is, I have a fantastic solution, probably for something around 35 to 40 crores, I'm just calculating. I I can solve all the organic waste. Not only me, there are other competitors of me who can solve the issue. Right. They are spending 400 crores on transportation content, not garbage sourcing content. Right. We can make a fantastic resource out of that, either LPG gas, methane, or even manure. Who's going to help us? Whom should I approach? Yeah, so I'll answer. Wake up, clean up, I'll approach. Only do exhibitions, they call me. I'm going to be there. I, I come there, Freedom Park, I spend money, I put a contract. Yeah. Then I'll nobody fix my life. So I'll answer. That's part of the challenge. So when we do wake up, clean up, and you come for the thing, we are trying to expose people to those things. Please understand one thing. The system is seriously dysfunctional. It's dysfunctional in terms of competencies. It is dysfunctional in terms of commitment. It is dysfunctional in terms of corruption. If all these were not there, we'd be living in bliss uh, land. So we are working uphill. Let's face that very, very clearly. So if you think that just because you have the best solution, it is going to fly in this country, think again. 
again going back to another New York Times article around the same time of the garbage city, they did this interview saying this is actually a Bangalorean. They said, you know, India doesn't have a single large scale waste. I'll come back to your composting question. Does not have a single waste to energy successful large scale plant in India. Our municipal solid waste composition of the calorific value are not particularly great to be able to do the waste to energy story. <laughs> then you have to put bagasse or biomass, etc. Then the economics don't work out. There's a person from Bangalore who was an entrepreneur like you were mentioning, <coughs> yes, you are, and who had this solution many, many years ago, but there was nobody to listen to him. So actually this article says, yes, there are waste to energy plants done by a Bangalorean, but they are in Malaysia and Indonesia, <laughs> not in Bangalore. That's the theme of that particular story. So you get the sense of the thing. Coming to your thing, obviously waste, wet waste is part of it. So it's destination bound. So once you segregate, in the wet waste, there are local solutions within the houses where people do local vermicomposting and various other composting. There's a company called Daily Dump, which provides local house-based solutions to do this. Then there are semi-size uh, places, organic waste converters, OWCs that exist. Bangalore is one of the cities which has actually the largest composting plant in the country run by government called the Karnataka Compost Development Corporation. It has been dysfunctional for the last six years for a very peculiar reason. Six years ago, they had a problem with the landfill and the only large scale composting unit that was working with a capacity to handle 1000 ton tons per day, they used that as a dump yard for all the waste. And for six years, a working composting plant went out of action. Now they have actually cleaned the waste over the last six years and is again springing back. So you have the Kanaraka composting, you have organic waste converters, you have decentralized solutions. So it's really destination, different kinds of waste to different sources. Okay, we'll move on because I need to give you a jalak about each of these. Tender Shore, I think Rajamani mentioned a little bit about Tender Shore. What do you know about Tender Shore? It's a project we did under City Connect. Yeah. It's a, it's a, let it finish, yeah. What should be on road and what the quality of road and uh, the specifications and then what will be there under the road. Okay. It's so a systemic approach to reduce uh, misuse uh, at the specification level, at the contracting level, monitoring level. Okay. Anybody else wants to say? for everything. Okay. So what does the word sure stand for? Tender we all understand. Specifications for urban, 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 urban not bad. You're not bad. Everybody is listening to this speech. So tomorrow, in fact, uh, a good friend of mine is coming to talk to you tomorrow, Narayan Ramchandran. You know, he's coming tomorrow. So I told him that I'll tell everybody that the forthcoming attraction tomorrow is even better than tonight's show. <laughs> and there is the TV camera to know that I said this. <laughs> okay. Yes, a specification for urban road execution. So here... Let me, I'm going straight to the solution. Actually, before going to the solution, let me talk about the problems. <coughs> what are the problems with the road business today? Roads are a mess. Why, what are the big problems? Like we talk, spoke about garbage. What are the top three problems with our roads today? Potholes. No footpaths. So what's the biggest problem in all this? Lack of coordination between whom and whom? Okay. But most of the roads are done by BBMP. Where's the problem? <coughs> Bescom and BWSSB road cut. That is the problem. Any other? Quality of roads. Quality of roads is a problem. Why does quality of why is quality of roads so poor? Because they are not tender shell, I will give you a treat here, whoever said that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Any other reasons? They should be using concrete roads so that it lasts longer instead of rebuilding. Who is interested in longer roads? Who is interested in longer roads? Anybody interested? 
public is interested, but uh, who is there to service the public interest? BPAC. 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 BPAC, eh? No, you are the guys who are going to make it happen. You want to ask something? No. No, just too much emphasis on automobility instead of other forms of right. transport. So his point really is there's too much of emphasis on motorists, private vehicles over public transport and pedestrianization and cyclists and the like. That's basically the point he's making. I'll tell you the biggest problem in the roads problem. There are, to my mind, two, three big problems. The biggest problem is, and nobody is really openly mentioning it, but the biggest problem is our projects leak money. Corruption, whatever word you want to call it, is the biggest problem. I don't know what the percentage is. Different, different people have tried to estimate the percentage. Ki if I spend 10 crores on roads, how much to, goes into the road and how much goes elsewhere. That is the biggest problem. Any idea how much that percentage could be? 60-40. 60 gone, 40 left. Not bad. Somebody has spoken about this before? No. We found out. You found out? Yeah. Musha is pretty good, yeah? From road contractor. From a road contractor. My own estimate was around 45 to 50 percent goes. Therefore, instead of a 2-inch star, you will get a 1-inch star. <laughs> this is number one problem out here. Unless we fix this leakage issue, we can cry ourselves hoarse. But it is a serious issue. And a lot of it has to do with election, finance, how we fund these things, etc. It has to do with that. But this is a serious, serious problem before we come to issues like concrete and non-concrete and all that stuff. Point number one. The second big issue as far as when you come to roads is the competency to design the right kind of road does not exist. You know, you mentioned potholes. I have this saying that today's puddle is tomorrow's pothole. You see a puddle today, tomorrow it is going to be a pothole because water is the biggest enemy of asphalt. Water and asphalt just don't mix. They hate each other. So if you have asphalt in which there's going to be water there, it's dead. That road is dead. Which comes to issues of where is the drain? How is the drain designed? Is the road sloped so that the runoff goes into the drain? Are the drains not clogged so that it can carry the runoff? On all these parameters, we, our system will fail the test. The original design is poor. We seem to prefer box drains while actually uh, cylindrical drains are considered to be better. We have drains which are next to the property instead of having drains which are next to the road. That means the property is there. Next to that the drain is built. There's a footpath and then there's a road and then there'll be some cross holes to make it go across the footpath into the drain. Bad design. The drains have to stick next to the road in an ideal design. So there are what I call, so the first problem is the corruption problem. The second problem is the competency problem. Do we have the competency to think and plan? I'm sorry, but it is a big challenge. So the combination of leaking on projects plus the inability to think about uh, what is the, sorry, <clears throat> what is the right design <coughs> parameters and standards and specs? We don't have them. If you look at BBMP drawings on a paper, they'll squiggle one sketch and issue the tender contract saying, go do it as per this. And that squiggle looks like a doctor's prescription. Chance that it'll get implemented, even if assuming it is right. So these are the two big problems. But at the heart, the point that he made is also a very, very big issue. In fact, just late, earlier today, I wrote an article for Bangalore Mirage, might come tomorrow or day after, on... They are running this campaign. I don't know how many of you read Bangalore Mirror. But they are running this campaign, My Footpath, My Foot. foot to get the, you have seen that. So I actually send them an SMS today saying that uh, what we need, what we need is a pedestrian budget. You know, when a budget is bad, normally critics slam it by saying this is a pedestrian budget. Which means it's an average budget. It is a terrible budget. I am saying BBMP, give us a pedestrian budget. Namge only pedestrian budget beko. 
Bangalore's got the weather to be a walking city. We don't have a single footpath which is walkable. <coughs> That's the tragedy. So at the heart of the problem goes to what I'm trying to say out here. The most important customer on the road is the pedestrian. I want to repeat this again. You have to design your cities and streets around the pedestrian. Here's a statistic not from Bangalore. This is a statistic from Chennai, another city. They have done detailed traffic studies and uh, uh, mobility studies. And one in two trips, the Chennai Municipal Master Plan says, one in two trips by individuals are done on foot. The definition of a trip is, I go to office and come back, that's a trip. I go to the neighborhood provision store and come back, that's a trip. So there's a definition of a trip and they're saying one in two trips are made on foot. Maid servants, hawkers, uh, the lower uh, income groups are all on foot, bulk of it, with the odd buses being taken. 